the first moisid of outreach for Chabad Labavitch in America was the release time program of Greater New York. The Rebbe would refer to, when I say the Rebbe now, I mean the Friedrich Rebbe and the Rebbe would refer to it as Mitvach Shah. Wednesday afternoon, they would go to public schools, Bachram from the yeshiva, girls from the seminary would go to public schools, take children from the public schools for one hour, because in America there's something called the separation of church and state. You cannot teach religion in the public schools. So the law was set up in New York State and many other states around the country that these children were able to one hour go out of school in the misgeret of school. It was sort of in school time and they learned about religion. So they were taken to a nearby shul. They were taken to a nearby yeshiva day school. And uh, then they were taught. Many of the Bachrim that I'm speaking to now, I'm sure have gone on release time or know about release time firsthand. It was really the children's rally was really a toitza, an outbirth from those, those uh, Wednesday hour. The devil wanted to spend ch- time with those public school children, and they, a few times a year, would make a rally. So in the early years, this is talking pre Tzivar Hashem, when the Rebbe created Tzivar Hashem in the 1980s. So we're talking about 60s and 70s, they would make a rally a few times a year for children of the release time. Um, and the yeshivas didn't even necessarily come. They would try to get children from the release time and other fillers that would come. Uh, they would ma- have a nice rally. They would dive in Mincha with the Rebbe. And I believe in the earlier years, there were times that the Rebbe didn't even speak. He participated. He also, sometimes once or twice, asked us to make a rally that the Rebbe didn't attend. The Rebbe went to the oil on Hanukkah and asked us to make a rally for the children. So they dive in Mincha, we had the clown shows, uh, uh, etc., other things that we did for the children. So my father, of blessed memory, of Yaakov Yudahecht, took over release time in 1945. And he was running release time from 1945, worked directly under the Rebbe. And they were times that they got together. For instance, the first Lag Baimah parade, again, was specifically designed for the children of release time. And that was the first, actually, parade for the Rebbe was, uh, with the Rebbe, was actually on a Purim, uh, I believe in Tafshin Yud Gimel, uh, 1953, and then the first uh, Lag Baimah parade, 1957, Tafshin Yud Zion, where you see the pictures, there's, again, there's pictures of movies, um, video footage, of the Rebbe, my father standing next to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe also addressed the children. At that time, the Rebbe addressed children for a few minutes. He spoke five, between five to 15 minutes. The Rebbe spoke one sicha, and that's what he spoke. Uh, And often when, so again, throughout the 1960s parades, and I think the only two rallies really took care of parades and Hanukkah during Hanukkah, because during Hanukkah was during the school year, uh, often came down, came out when the children had off from school and we were able to get the children to come to 770. Uh, the rally in those days uh, really consisted of a, clown, a little clown show or a magic show and uh, that was a little controversial in itself. We allowed to show married, magic. The ma- magician had explained that it was only sleight of hand, not magic. Um, or jugglers. We had a number of jugglers that throughout the years, and these kids came. Now, most of those rallies were really, de la came that, in other words, the release time decided that we're making a rally. As I said, most of those rallies were always on Hanukkah. In the latter years, it became from a Sursa de la Ela that ever wanted rallies with the children, particularly after the time of, um, of Tzivus Hashem. And that's when the style came of almost every single Yontif that there was a rally. There was a rally, um, a series of Chuva, sometimes in, in the days of Slichus, a series of Chuva, during Sukkot, Hanukkah, before Purim, 
uh, a Chalamoid Pesach and before Shavuos. And that's when we know it, as the rallies do the way we know it, that the Rebbe would speak, the Rebbe would speak three Sichas. Once or twice the Rebbe spoke a fourth Sicha. Uh, but and those rallies also, the Rebbe, um, the basic rally was more or less, uh, they also had some type of entertainment before, would start off with a storyteller or some type of a skit, sometimes a, a, a video, but it was very, very ruchniistic oriented because it was ready for the kids from the yeshiva, of El Teda, and the Babaji Yeshiva, and Beis Rivka, of course. Um, the earlier days, when it was only for release time, the rallies were really geared, and, the, and it had to be fun. So it was a clown show, it was a juggler, it was a magician, and doing various different things that the kids were able to enjoy, and then they never came afterwards. In fact, I was still a bacher, and there was a big surprise that the Rebbe was going to give out dollars to the children um, after the rally. And here I am in a, dressed in a costume, dressed as a clown. And the question was, okay, do I go to the Rebbe? Do I not go to the Rebbe? I mean, I, I was in front of the Rebbe. Many of us were clowns in front of the Rebbe on Lak Boima, but do I actually face the Rebbe face to face with, uh, you know, asking for a dollar, asking for Hanukkah help. And I remember asking my Chavedim, uh, I don't think I spoke to my Meshvi about it, but I think it was Mas Chavedim, the Chai Chavedim said, listen, you're in a clown, you, you're working for the Rebbe, you're only doing it because of the Rebbe make, wanted the, the rally. And uh, so sure enough, I went by, went by and the Rebbe gave me uh, a dollar. And perhaps being that I was a clown, the Rebbe said next year twice more. You know, kifayim to l'fashia, which um, so he sort of ne next year twice more. The Rebbe said to me in English. Um, one of when you talk about the rallies, one of the things that I remember is as follows: uh, living in East Flatbush, which today is part of Crown Heights. Living in East Flatbush, my father was a rabbi in East Flatbush, and living in East Flatbush, my uh, my, the house that we lived in, my parents slept upstairs, and myself and my brother Yossi, we slept downstairs. Uh, and it is Hanukkah, the end of Hanukkah, that uh, seventh day of Hanukkah, and my father comes and wakes us up 12 o'clock at night, opens the light and wakes us up. Uh, my brother Yossi was older than I am, so he was already a bocher, uh, and, and connected more left with 770. I was a little bit younger, and he says, Rabbi Chodakov just called him. The Rebbe said to Rabbi Chodakov, Nu um, Erdocharov, about my father. So it's, it was 12 o'clock, a few minutes before 12. He said, Masnam Shlof finished. Uh, being that he's a rabbi, he's probably not sleeping yet. And on uh, Tomer Shlof, says uh, it is okay to wake him as well. My father was always well, we said, he told the story, I was up already. I was, I was still up. At 12 o'clock, he said, listen, I want tomorrow uh, a rally in 770. That was a big question, how we were able to get in a few hours to make a rally, when again, the Rebbe's focus was on the children from release time. And please understand, Bachrim, that there was, when we see a rally today, uh, and Baruch Hashem, Aluteira, Baba Chishiva, Beisivka, there are big schools that come here and bring a lot of children, the daycare centers, the, 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 the other maestres, they're bringing a lot of children, and therefore 770 is packed. But in those days, the yeshivas had less children. Not all the yeshiva children came. It wasn't like a fabrengen, the way we know it, that the Rebbe said sichas. And therefore, uh, many of the adults did not come. 770, welcome, of course, were there. But uh, many adults didn't come. So the children that came was mostly the, or was designed for the release time children. And more than once, uh, the Rebbe told my father, you know, he wanted to see more children from mid release time. He once told to Manachanaka that I wanted to see more children from the release time. And once on a Black Bema parade, right after the parade, my father, uh, uh, he said to my father, Vuzan in the kinder from, uh, from release time. 
So Tzeva had a very, very, uh, we're going to after Yud Shvat, and, 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 and the Rebbe's focus, uh, first of all, it was one of the mices of the previous Rebbe, the Friedrich Rebbe, and therefore was very close to the Rebbe, but that was a very, very close project that was very close to the Rebbe's heart. As I suppose all mices, but um, we know that the Rebbe spoke about with his time many, many times, and even after my the passing of my father, the Rebbe spoke, his sicha was basically built around the release time program. The teaching children from public schools, teaching them Torah uh, and mitzvahs. So uh, the rallies were more or less around that. Later in the, particularly in the MEMS, meaning in the 1980s, rallies became more what we call for the Tzivah Sashem. And in that case, Oh, again, beginning that the rally started through release time, that's why automatically Rabbi Hecht did the translation because he was the head of release time. In fact, I was told, not to get into details, but I was told at one point they suggested to the Rebbe maybe someone else should be the translator for the Rebbe's words to the children. This was for a Lagboyma parade. And the Rebbe said, the Shver at the my father-in-law, the priest, did ever set up Rabbi Hecht as the person in charge of release time. And therefore, you have to talk to the Friedrich Rebbe if you want to make any changes. He's the head, and therefore, he's going to do the translation of the Rebbe. Now, I want to, to, to explain, particularly to the younger chassidim of today. You know, we learn the Rebbe's Torah. We take a sicha. That sicha was said by the Rebbe, but it was also worked out. A team of people under the uh, direction of Rabbi Yoel Khan or under the direction of Rabbi Label Altine, they had a team of people that worked on the Sikha to sort of write the Sikha that a person can understand everything what the Rebbe is saying. But you're standing next to the Rebbe and the Rebbe is speaking a Sikha. And even though you're taking notes, it's sometimes difficult to understand what was the main nakuda what the Rebbe wanted to explain. What was the Rebbe's nakuda what the Rebbe wanted to transmit? What was the Rebbe's new mifza? What was his new campaign? What was his message to, uh, to the children in this case, in a rally? And many times it wasn't easy to understand. So I must tell you that before a rally, my father was always nervous of will I give over the Rebbe's words properly to, to the children? And every rally, he would write to the Rebbe. First of all, he would write to the Rebbe, the Seder of the rally, what, what we're having, the entertainment that we're having, who's, who's going to speak for the children, if there's a story, whatever is going to be told, and how it's going to, rally is going to work, the food that they're going to give out, again, who spoke and what they, what they did. But more importantly, he would always write to the Rebbe, and ask for a bracha that I give over the Rebbe's words and the kavon of the Rebbe's words to the children. And again, I say, I mean, I'm, I'm a little guy, but, but really ask any of the elter chassidim or the chayzim to say when the Rebbe gave a sicha and immediately to then give it over and to pinpoint the point and idea and charge, as we say in America, the meaning the marching orders for the children and what they should do was not an always an easy task. Sometimes it, you learn a sicha and it's easy. And sometimes it's so difficult. You have to learn a sicha a second time, a third time, a fourth time. You don't have that time. The Rebbe just said it and you have to repeat it. So my father took the preparations for a rally very, very seriously. He took the achrayis of giving over the Rebbe's words very, very seriously. In fact, He'd be in the office before his uh, before a rally. You couldn't talk to him. He had no time to talk to anybody. He couldn't. He he just focused sort of to put himself in the spiritual place of being the Rebbe's meturgamim, being the Rebbe's interpreter for children, and be able to give over the Rebbe's um, the Rebbe's wish, the Rebbe's marching orders, the Rebbe's want for the little children. Um, now, again, if we go through the MEMS, the rallies were pretty much simple. You came in, there was sometimes entertainment, sometimes not. Basically, David Mincha with the Rebbe, 
The Rebbe afterwards was asked uh, to speak. The Rebbe usually spoke three sichas during, uh, right after every sicha, Rabbi Hecht was the one who gave over to the children. And um, the ideas were given. The Rebbe usually gave tzedakah to give out to the children. Most of the times it was dimes that the Rebbe gave to children. Most of the times he gave it to madrichim to give over to all the children. Uh, and that's why many of you saw have dimes. Most of the times it was two dimes. Sometimes it was three dimes that uh, the Rebbe gave to the children. And um, there was always singing. Most of the times there was a music band, uh, which was an expense, of course, but, but it was, there was a music band, particularly when you had the rallies of uh, Yontif time and the rallies on, on uh, Hanukkah, you always had music to play with, uh, with the, the singing that went on uh, for the Rebbe. And the Rebbe was always very, very levitic with the children. The Rebbe also, oh, you, you would see, able to see the Rebbe would look to, looked all around. He would sometimes, you see him look back because the Bacharim would stand in the Weibershul, the women's section, what we call on Kingston Avenue, going into Kingston Avenue. He would turn around. The Rebbe really spanned the audience, looked over who uh, sort of was there at, the, um, at that Fabringen or at that rally. I just want to say a very cute story. So the Rebbe is giving over a sicha. The Rebbe is t- t- telling the sicha to the children. And Rabbi Hecht, you know, again, you're under pressure. You have your notes. You wrote very them quickly. Sometimes you can't even read your own writings. And you're giving over. And my father coined an expression taking from the Rebbe that you got to knock the Yitzhahara out of the box. And the first time my father said that, and with the, my father was, you know, full of life. And he says, and Kindelach, you got to take the Yitzhahara and knock him out of the box. Did ever smiled. It was like, he almost like a laugh. He seemed to us that he just loved that expression. Knock the Yitzhahara out of the box. And... He, my father, of course, used it many times afterwards. And if you listen to some of the uh, translations of Rabbi Hecht, you know, you'll see that he uses that term because he knew that the Rebbe really liked that term. And really, Rabbi Hecht was the one who coined that term, using that term for the, that the children should be able to understand. You know, it, uh, I guess it's sort of a modern term for a very, very serious thing of a Jew winning over his Yetzirah. I think the beauty of our Rebbe was when he spoke, he zeroed in. He knew his crowd. When he spoke for the men, he spoke one way. When he spoke for the women, he spoke another way. When he spoke for the children, he spoke another way. And used terminologies like playing ball, eating a candy, we're talking about the kashas of the candy, checking the kashas of the candy, sharing the candy with uh, with your fellow uh, fellow friend talking about the Yisrael. The Rebbe, although he spoke in a language that many of the children did not understand, but he used words and concepts that were very understandable for children. And the beauty of the Rebbe was Rabbi Yael Khan and, and, and the big chassidim that stand, stood around the Rebbe were able to gain from that same sicha as today we have, the Rebbe Detsukinda, for those of you who will look to whoever speaks to children, both in, in Yiddish and in, and in English, you can see that those sichas, and look at it as an adult, you can say, wow, there is a message for an adult, but also the Rebbe applied and spoke and used some of the, if you spoke about the, the Yantav of Hanukkah, would use the story and bring it down to the children that it was applicable. The beauty of our Rebbe was, we got to be practical. Action. Action speaks louder than words. We have to make a difference. We have to do things. And you're walking away from this Fabrengen, there has to be a change. There has to be an action that you're going to take. And that's why the concept of Tzedakah, of course, that the Rebbe gave. Um, and, and the Rebbe even said, you know, there, you know, the other, when he said, one dime is for Tzedakah and the other dime is for your. Thing, and you can buy candy with it. That was, I, I believe, once he, he said. So it was very, very geared to the children. So 
particularly the Madrichim, or my father would come back after a, a rally and we'd say, wow, you know, the things that they never spoke to, to the children today was like so applicable. It was so appropriate. It was so age appropriate, which is so very, very important for Machanchim and and when you're speaking, you got to know who you know who your crowd is. And just in just as a, a side thing, also, I remember once the Rebbe uh, said a sicha to the children, and he told told my father that I would like you to translate it uh, into English and make a little booklet out of it. My father, not realizing what the Rebbe's request was. He gave it to someone in release time to uh, a younger man that was working then for release time and that he should translate it. My father then sends it into the Rebbe. The Rebbe sends it back and says, it was nice, done, it was done very nicely. I asked you to do it. I would, in other words, he wanted specifically Rabbi Hecht because different people, you're going to use different expressions, you can do different words. That's the way I understand it. So he wanted specifically my father's style in that translation. So that was just a little cute story of, of uh, that, that the rally was not only when the Rebbe spoke, but even afterwards, the Rebbe was concerned and taking this information or these uh, teachings and taking them a step further. Re release time, like everything in life, went up and down, up and down. There were years that we had a lot of children, years that we had less children. Of course, the years we had a lot of children, uh, and sometimes it was simply getting more participation that the Bochum should go. 770 sometimes had more Bochum and, or, or, and, and less Bochum in those years. Today you walk in 770, can I know her? It's, it's packed from, from, from wall to wall. But in those days, it was a small base of Medrash upstairs. Uh, so the instructors or girls from or and seminary that went on release time, it was very, very important to simply get what we refer to as the release time instructor. Uh, the Rebbe very much, I think, had not only a good feeling towards the children, but also a very special feeling towards the release time instructors. So you were able to see it in, you know, in, in the rally or when they came for dollars uh, or for, I mean, for the dimes that the children, that, to give out to the children, etc. It was, it was something. Um, knowing that there was a rally, of course, Bachanim wanted to be part of it. And hey, you could only be part of it if you're part of release time. And that's the way you got Madrichim. Of course, the latter years of the, the uh, rallies, we said it was for yeshivas, so it was the Malamdim uh, that, that went over. Uh, but again, it was always called about in the instructors and those, uh, particularly on, by the girls, it was usually uh, high school girls that actually set, helped uh, hold the girls' order and, and uh, participate within the rally itself. The famous... Sukkis Fabrengen of Sukkis Tof Shin Lamid Zion, 1976. Sukkis. The Rebbe made a special Sukkis Fabrengen. The Rebbe washed. The Rebbe gave Koshal Bracha. And only children of release time. And only children of release time were allowed to come into the Sukkah. The Bachram worked so hard to fill that Sukkah with, with, with kids, to make it full. And they were successful. And there's, of course, there's video of it. And uh, the girls were in the, in the shul looking in. And later the Rebbe said the boys should leave and the girls should come in. And nobody, the biggest chassidim, did not come in to stand uh, in the sukkah. Only the instructors of the release time program and those that were associated with the release time program. And it was very, very, very strict. And I remember... A bacha that was very was in very to him very negaya to be to be inside by that fabrengen, and he came to my father. He said, "I promise you, I'm going to go and release time. I'm going to be involved in release time. Please, please, please." And there was like a whole meeting. Should they allow this bacha who wasn't at that point going on release time? And of course, they ended up accepting him. He was there, and then um, kept his promise of being involved in release time. So we see that the love for the children of the release time of the Rebbe to these children, I think was very, something very special, and so much so that he wanted to have a fabrengen only, it was a regular fabrengen.
it was it was a sichas. Of course, my father translated with nigunim, certain nigunim that the Rebbe said. And as I said, the Rebbe told the children didn't have to wash, but the Rebbe washed, and um, and gave kosher baruch afterwards. I think ten people washed. There was a minion that washed, so uh, uh, a few of us washed, and but the children just made a mezonis and. Uh, and uh, uh, I think also a goffin and a sha and, uh, and that they had to eat in the in the place of a sukkah, of course. In the early years, the, the rallies was shorter because they never spoke very, you know, so it was mostly the, it was mostly the front part. Uh, later, the rallies uh, from when the Rebbe came down from Mincha, it was usually probably about an hour, and uh, there were times they ever went later. And believe me, the yeshivas went crazy. How are they going to get the kids back on time? The buses would 770 Eastern Park. It was always, always crazy. I mean, you have buses from one yeshiva. And I'll think about this. You have buses from a few yeshivas that are out there trying to get the kids, the younger kids, the older kids. Um, so it was always outside was uh, uh, so much crazy. But the Rebbe, um, as I said, spoke about uh, through Sichas, I think from... Beginning of Mincha till after to the end of the rally was usually about an hour. Of course, Hanukkah took a little bit longer, and of course, those famous rallies when we had an international rally, that uh, uh, the Hanukkah where there was an international rally that we were tied in with um, with Israel and the lighting of the candles, lighting of the menorah there, and and uh, and France and England, and it was really something very very special. Of course, there's books and and videos on on that uh, international. Um, also, by something like that, by the Hanukkah rally, the outside, they had uh, big uh, screens outside, so they'd be able to get people outside to be able to watch it. And of course, 770 outside Eastern Parkway was packed with people watching uh, the rally from the outside. To, to my knowledge, although the Rebbe, my father wrote a letter to the Rebbe every rally beforehand, and afterwards, I don't know of any special answers that uh, my father received. But at the Lag Boima parade, uh, and you can see this on the on film as well, you can see it on the video, my father always, right after, right at the end of the parade, would turn to the Rebbe and would ask the Rebbe, the Rebbe is zufrieden? Is the Rebbe happy? And, um, and always, you know, the Rebbe always gave some di different words. Like, a, I guess, one time he says, I was given vincic. Kinder from the release time. Yes, everything was great, but um, but that there was there was so so few children from the release time. So again, to us in in the world, they look at the children's rallies, Tzivur Hashem, but really the, the the cornerstone of the children's rally was the release time program of Greater New York. Mitzvah Shah did the way they ever spoke about it, and those special friar children that came to seven seventy for that hour or two to spend with the Rebbe, diving with the Rebbe, and hear words from the Rebbe.